Welcome back to the continued coverage of the 2015 Revere Beach International Sand Sculpting Festival. Today was the actual beginning of the competition. So the competitors were out here at 8 o'clock in the morning waiting for the horn to blow. The minute that, the second that horn blows, they're allowed to go onto the plot. So they can do all the preparation off the plot. The second the horn blows, they're allowed into the plot and they can start moving the sand and using the water and doing their pound up. That happened uh, all morning and they had lunch. I haven't seen anything up to this point, but usually after lunch, some of them do actually get to start, get to the carving on the very first day. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go take a look at how big the pound ups are. You're gonna see that the duos are larger than the solos. And we're gonna see if anybody has started their actual sculpting. Okay, we are at plot number one, and this is Kevin from Australia and Leonardo from Italy. Can't see Leo right now. He might be on the other side. Uh, we mentioned yesterday that the way some of the sculptors drew their pound-ups are going to be different, and they have different techniques. You'll see the big pile of sand back here where Kevin is shoveling from now. He, they, when they put their first form down, which is the large one right behind Kevin's feet, um, they put the form towards the front and sh uh, flat on the ground and then shoveled the sand into that first form. So they're using the pile that was given to them to shovel into those forms. And when we get to another sculpture that uh, used a different technique, we'll show you that technique for comparison. Up oh, there's Leo. <laughs> Hi, Leo. Hi. Okay, we're at Morgan and Abe. Uh, this looks like, to me, a very strategic pound up. Um, some of them you'll look that you'll when you look at them they're just a pile here pile, I mean a stack of forms here a stack of forms here but you can see they obviously have a very um, specific plan for the way that their forms are set up you have the one far over to the to the right and it is actually dug you can see it's dug down into the natural beach sand they removed some natural beach sand so that they could get a nice flat level there and they're very strategically placing these forms and it'll be really interesting to see what their plan is what their idea is for the reasoning of this um, the configuration of their pound up okay we're with Suzanne and Hanukkah from the Netherlands uh, this is our only all-female team, which is really exciting. But don't let that uh, don't let that fool you. These girls can move some sand, and you can see something that they're doing, which is another strategic move, is to do one pound up and then actually take some of the wooden forms off and reuse them for another pound up. It's not that they don't have access to the to enough you know wood to do it all in one. It's just that it's a more strategic way for them. They don't have to put all those forms together all at one time. Yesterday, they can do it as they go, just in case they change their mind and decide that they want to change a size for a form. It gives them that flexibility. Okay, we're in the front of Hanukkah and Suzanne's um, pound up, which I didn't see coming from the other direction. And this is another, we talked about Morgan and Abe, how they had something strategic going on. There's a very definite reason that they have these forms placed where they do. Uh, you can see there's one in the back, one over here, and one over here, and there's a definite reason for that. They might be creating some type of a puzzle where if you stand in one spot, you're going to get an illusion of a completely different sculpture using all three of these pound ups, and I'll be interested to see if that is in fact the case. Okay, this is David from Canada and Ilya from Russia. And this is a, an exciting team that we're really looking forward to seeing what they're going to create. Um, you, you haven't seen the comparison yet because we haven't been down to the solos, but you see in most of these pound-ups so far, there are numerous pound-ups. They've got a main one and one off to the side. They may have three or four. They've got different configurations. And you're probably not going to see that or as much of that down in the solos. One reason there's only one person down there. Over here you can have one person in the box where Ilya is and David shoveling up to him. So you're getting two things done at once in the same amount of time. Whereas when you're down at the solos, they're going to have to do that all by themselves. Uh, another reason is they have a whole lot more sand. They also have double the man hours because there are two people. 
So uh, yeah, you're going to see a lot larger um, sculptures at this end and, and more elements involved in each, in each piece. Okay, you also see that Ilya is pouring the, um, you know, he has the hose and obviously there's so much water that's used in this process. Every grain of sand that goes in there has to get wet, but that's also what makes it so strong. Dry sand does not stay together. But in order to do that, you can see David's bringing another form over right now. They're going to put that on top there, but on every single form you see that plastic. What that does is actually Dave is, is fixing a piece of it right now because you don't want to lose your water. If you lose your water, you can lose your sand with it and it actually runs out the side. We call it a blowout. So to prevent blowouts, they put the plastic and it uh, puts a seam on every, I mean it um, seals in every one of those seams where the wood meets. Okay, we're with Steve from Rhode Island and Deb Local from Saugus, Mass. Um, something that you see on this pound up that you haven't seen on the other pound ups is this strapping right here. This strapping is um, an extra security so that they don't have blowouts. There's so much pressure inside those forms and depending on how you do your pound up, uh, sometimes there's more pressure than others, if, depending on how much water you use and how much actual pounding you do. So Steve uh, does use this all the time. Every time I've seen Steve compete, he does use the banding. And he doesn't have collapses, so something must be working there. Um, another thing that happens sometimes is the, the artist will have to stop in the middle of a pound up and look, refer back to their drawings, their sketches or something. They might want to change once they have one of their pound ups completed, uh, they might want to change the location of the second pound up. The first one might not have ended up in exactly the, the, the place that they wanted to, so they have to refer back to their drawings. Um, also, you'll see this looks where Deb is right now, looks completely different than this pound up over here. So far, everybody you have seen has been using wooden forms. Steve, we provide wood. We do not provide this plastic. So if they want to use the plastic, they have to bring it themselves. Steve did bring this with him. He traveled with the plastic. And it's just another method. Sometimes you don't want to do a square form. You want, to, you want it to be round for, you know, depending on whatever it is that you're going to be sculpting. And sometimes round works better than square or rectangle. So what they do in that case, it's the same as the wood but they use clamps. You'll see C clamps holding it together for whatever size they need and they tape the edges or put plastic just like the wooden forms uh, but it's now going to be a round shape instead of straight lines. Okay we're now at the south end and we just entered into the solos area and right away it's completely obvious to me a difference between the solos and the duos and if you haven't noticed it already just by this shot this angle every single one of the sculptors from my view here is already carving and well into their carving and the reason for that is this when they plan their pieces this is the solo division and they will they will plan to use approximately 20 percent of their total time on their pound up and they have that figured out that that's about the right amount of time to use in order to finish their sculpture in the appropriate time, the amount of time that's allotted to them. So most of the solos have their pound ups done by lunch on the first day because that's approximately 20% of their total time. Whereas in the, in the duos, they have 60 hours, so their percentage of time is a little bit different than in the solos. So that is a reason, and of course there's more sand, that's the reason they haven't started sculpting yet. Okay, we're at Dan Doubleday. He's from Florida. He's also my husband, <laughs> but I have nothing to do with the judging, so n n nothing uh, suspicious there. Um, you'll see something in Dan's that we saw in Steve Tapazio and Deb's uh, pound up that they had banding around their forms. Dan also has banding, but Dan's is a little bit different. Steve traveled from only from Rhode Island and he drove, so he was able to bring his banding with him. If you're going to travel with that kind of banding that Steve had, it's very heavy. So what Dan has done as an alternate is nylon um, 
there's nylon running through this tape. It's a nylon banding tape, and it's very strong. And all he has to do, it's very easy to travel with, very light. He only needs one roll of it. It adds the same strength, or gives the same strength that Steve's strappings did. And all he has to do is take a utility knife and cut on the seams, and it will release that uh, banding when he's ready to do that. Okay, I did make a comment that Dan Doubleday is my husband, but he does not show me or tell me what he's going to be carving. And I'm, I'm thinking and I'm hoping that this might be uh, something to do with our lives. Dan and I just got married in April and it looks to me like this is going to be a couple and that might be me putting my arm around him. I'm not sure, but we'll see where this goes. I have not seen any sketches or drawing for, for, for this piece at all. Okay, we're at Benjamin's site, and Benjamin is from Acapulco, Mexico. What he's doing right now is he's finished with his pound up, and he has taken off some of his forms, but he's reusing his forms to help him because he doesn't want to take all of them off because he wouldn't be able to reach the top. Uh, but also, you'll see he's only stepped in two or three inches on each level. So he does not have a comfortable place. If he doesn't build this platform, he doesn't have a comfortable place to stand and actually do the carving. So that's what he's done. He's taken a couple of minutes to make that platform, and now he'll be able to freely sculpt the top two forms of his sculpture. Okay, we're with Melanie, and she is also from Canada. She has a... Um, a uh, picture in her hand you can see in her left hand there and that's reference that's um, a lot of sculptors you'll see them using that's not necessarily at all who she's I mean what she's carving but that might just be an element and I'm guessing that it's the positioning of that woman's head that's what she's looking back at the picture maybe every once in a while for reference just so she's got uh, anatomy correctly correct and in the co um, proper places you'll all Okay, Melanie also built herself a platform, but she's already got all her forms off. Um, what are the, a lot of the sculptors do is they do that because proportion-wise, you don't want to lose your proportion and start off at a uh, smaller than it needs to be or larger than it needs to be. Larger than it needs to be, you can always cut it down a little bit, but it's nice to get uh, an overall idea of the, the, sh the size of the pound up you're working with and, and how you're going to carve into it. Melanesia is a very strong carver. It's um, very physical. That sand is compacted so hard that it, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's a lot of work carving it all away like that. Okay, we're with Jonathan Bouchard, who we know and lovingly refer to as Joby. Um, Joby has most of his forms off. Uh, again, he's getting a general idea in blocking out to give an, you know, to make sure he's got everything properly um, proportioned. He's already got quite a bit of detail. You can see he's planning something on the back here. Or this could be the front. I don't know. It's way too early to try try and even figure out what they're doing. But you can also look. He's finished this pound up, but he has a lot of sand over here. So he has plans for that sand, whether it's using it soft in soft pack be, or in, in doing another pound up at, at some other point. But he will end up using all that sand. Okay, we're with Ongurun David from Brussels. And you can see he also is in the blocking out phase of his sculpture, trying to find, you can see the beginning of a face uh, happening right here, the nose, the positioning of the nose. And that, when they're doing a, a face, that's usually the first thing they do is they will find the eyes, the eyes and the nose and work from there. Okay, we're with Guy Olivier DeVoe. He's also from Canada. Uh, you'll see he's got a platform, but he's using his a little bit differently. <laughs> his needed to be a bit higher because he's up on a higher part of his sculpture, but he's in a pretty comfortable position there. He's just sitting and chilling and finding where elements, certain elements are, are going. You can, it's almost like you can see their brains, the gears in their brains. Where do I want to carve? Where's my next stroke of the margin trowel going to be and you could stand here and watch them for an hour and it changes so much in just that short time there's so much that happens in such a short amount of time 
it's just uh, interesting to watch. It, this is nice for me because I don't always get the opportunity to actually watch them carving and it's fun. Now he's also started something kind of in the in this the section that he's carving on right now but he hasn't carved above it and again he's finding where he wants certain things to be. There's no sense starting at the top with any detail when you haven't um, established down below where you want it to go. So he's putting all those elements together and the top part up there, that'll all be very, you know, be very clean and sharp and or detailed by the time we see a finished product here. And hi, we are with Pavel now. Pavel is from Russia. Pavel's still doing his pound up, but he has, this is a lot of sand. You'll notice down below, he has a pad of about maybe 18 to 20 inches of sand without a form around it. Uh, if the sculptor wants to use the sand without a form, that's entirely up to them. They're allowed to do that. And in this sand, it's, it's not as um, risky as some other sand, but they do still have to treat the sand. All that sand does still have to get wet or he runs the risk of uh, collapsing because you've got so much wet heavy sand on top of dry sand so if he doesn't compact that sand uh, he could you know that's when you could have stress fractures and stuff and how they compact the lower sand without the you know without having wood around it is they poke holes down into the sand and fill the holes with water and do the wet mushy mush thing down down in there so uh, this is also a lot of sand. This is a large form, long, large form for a solo competitor. So it'll be interesting to see what he does with this. Now you'll notice his is not as high as some of the others. And the reason being is that he has used so much sand with this size of a form and they all have the same amount of sand. So he has just used his sand in a different way. And then sometimes it just gets too hot and you have to step away from that pound up for a minute. This is Marielle Hiesels. She's from the Netherlands and she's just taking time out to hydrate. She also has a good size pound up going on and maybe the pound up is finished. I can't see inside that top box. And sometimes you have to let it sit for a minute depending on how much water you used in the top form. You can't take the wood off right away. You have to let it sit for a minute. Okay, this is Sue McGrew. She's from Tacoma, Washington. Hi, Sue. Uh, I don't know if I've ever been to a competition where Sue was carving the first day. Yeah, but don't let that uh, fool you because she can carve as fast as she is slow with the pound up. <laughs> How's that, Sue? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, she's not slow. She's just strategic. She's, she paces herself and she can carve fast, believe me. So what may take her some time doing the pound up she surely makes up for in the carving part of it okay this is dan belcher and he is from st louis missouri um dan's got a, a pretty large pound up and he already has three maybe i don't know how many levels there were but it looks like one two three maybe three and a half levels and what he's doing right now is finding the piece i, I don't know what he's sculpting let's say he was sculpting an elephant. Well, right now he's finding the elephant. He has such a large bulk of sand that you, you can't start and do detail. You have to block out. You have to move around continuously. He's here right now. He'll be around, he'll go all the way around this sculpture uh, two or three times before he's, uh, you know, before he finds exactly what it is uh, he's looking for in this sculpture. He'll stand back just like that. He'll look. They look at proportion. They look at placement. They may look back at their reference material. It's you don't just get up there and 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 you know create in in ten minutes. I mean, it takes a lot of time and a lot of uh, experience.